I'd like to call to order the City of Douglasville City Council uh, work session, legislative work session for today, which is Thursday, January the 11th. We will have our invocation by our graduate fellow, Mr. Aaron Sorowitz, and after that, the Mayor Pro Tem, Mayor Pro Tem Richard Siegel will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand for the invocation. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Let's bow our heads. Loving Heavenly Father, we acknowledge your holy presence today. We thank you for being our infinite source of peace, love, and wisdom. We know that your Holy Spirit guides and directs us. Your love enfolds and illuminates us. Let that light of your divine wisdom direct the deliberations of this council so that they may tend to the preservation of peace, the promotion of happiness, and may perpetuate to us the blessing of equal liberty. In your name we pray, amen. Stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Mayor Pro Tem, for leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and Aaron always for doing such a great invocation. I'd like to go over a few um, procedural items tonight before we get started with the meeting. Again, it's good to be here in the new year. I would like to welcome you to the City of Douglasville's Legislative Work Session. This is a work session where agenda items are present for discussion and no official action will be taken tonight. Official action will be taken on these items discussed tonight at our uh, next voting meeting. If the business you're here to discuss is not listed as an agenda item, there will be ample time under the agenda item comments from citizens and delegates uh, section for you to discuss your business. The few protocol procedural things I'd like to go over, um, we'll ask that you would keep your comments and presentations on a professional level, dealing with the facts that are important for this governing body to make their decisions. We will not accept comments that are considered by the chair to be a personal attack on any individual or group of individuals. If you, uh, if you do this, we'll ask, you know, we'll give you a warning the first time, and if you deviate, we'll ask that you leave the chambers. Only one person speaking at a time, Please do not applaud or react to speakers or speak from the audience, cheer, carry on a conversation with others in the audience or disrupt the meeting in any other way. I remind you that you're only required to accept public comments during the required public hearing. If you have a pager or cell phone or a tablet or electronic device, we'll ask that you please uh, turn those off or put them in silent mode so that they will not be disruptive. The agenda items will be handled as the, follow, the following. The committee chairperson will read the agenda item, then the person representing that agenda item or the applicant will make his or her presentation, and at that time, that will be the opportunity for you to present the information, and the mayor and council will probably, we will ask you questions to, uh, for clarifying information so that we'll be able to help us better make our decision. After that, the committee chair will ask for comments or statements from the audience. There is a maximum time of 30 minutes for those who speak in favor or in opposition to the agenda item, and each person will have five minutes to speak. If you are speaking on the agenda items or you wanna speak during comments from citizens and delegates, we ask that you would have filled out the card that was pl uh, placed outside on the table and hand that card to our um, clerk Ms. Vicki Acker, the city clerk. Each person has one opportunity to speak. This is not a meeting for question and answers. We're not debating. It's not a debate format. And um, those are all the questions that we have. I mean, all the comments. And if you have any questions, this is a time to ask if you don't understand. And thank you. Not seeing any, we'll move on with the agenda as presented. We don't have any announcements or presentations in the first committee is public safety and that's chaired by council member Samuel Davis. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Madam Mayor, I have a couple of items. Items A, request for the change in agent outlet manager for the alcoholic beverage license for the retail packages and sale of wine and malt beverages at the following establishment. Licensed public supermarket, INC, DBA, public supermarket, INC, Number 485, location 3316 Highway 5. Current agent outlet manager, David Lenert. Proposed agent outlet manager, Jonathan Pastas. The required fees have been paid into finance department. Will the applicant please come down, please? Mm -hmm. 
State your name and uh, address, please, sir. Good evening. My name is John Pastore, and I, re I actually work at the business at Publix at 3316 Highway 5, Douglasville, Georgia, 30135. And you are the current outlet manager? Yes, sir. And, uh, and the alcohol, uh, we're going to ask our, our mayor and council if they have any questions to, to ask you. Mayor Council? Councilman Davis, just yes, to, to talk to us mayor. about your um, training. I shop there all the time. So. Oh, excellent. Thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, we have a pretty extensive training for all new cashiers and pretty much anybody who runs a register. Um, it consists of videos that they're required to watch and also um, computer-based training, which gives them interaction and um, shows them the processes and policies of how we handle selling alcohol and, and tobacco products. Um, also, we have um, on-the-job training where they are actually trained by their manager one-on-one -on -one, um, in the process of seeing how the whole thing works from the transaction of a customer coming through the line with alcohol or tobacco and then going through the whole process until the checkout is complete. Thank you so much, Mr. Pastoral. Yep. Thank I you. I believe you answered all the questions. Thank you, sir. If you want to come back on Monday, is it Monday? Tuesday, Tuesday I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, and uh, we give you a... Good answer. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so sir. much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Item B, request for the change in agent outlet manager for the alcoholic beverage license for the sale on-premises consumption of wine, malt beverages, and spirit liquor at the following establishment, licensing, Douglasville, MAC, LLC, DBA, TMAC, location 7397 Douglas Boulevard, current agent outlet manager, Charles Loper. Proposed agent outlet manager James Dix and the craft fees have been paid into the finance department. Will T Mac? Oh, you're already down. Thank you. And names and. Ready to go. Absolutely. Uh, my name is James Michael Dix. Uh, as you said, I'm the uh, general manager of Taco Mac located on 7397 Douglas Boulevard. I am Mendy Thompson with Sard and Luff Attorneys, 3789 Roswell Road in Atlanta, 30342. And Mary Council, <laughs> you have any questions? Madam Mayor, go ahead. We'd be happy to explain our training. That would, that would okay. be fine. Absolutely. Yes, that's, that's what um, well, of course, uh, IDing is our number one policy. Um, everyone's taught that we ID no matter what age or how you look. Um, I personally have ID'd a person that was 101 years old. Um, but uh, as far as one-on-one -on -one training, of course, uh, computer-based training, videos, and then um, you know working alongside other training team members as well that show them step-by-step um, -step how this process goes. And how long have you been managing this location? At this location, I've been here for six months. With the company, I've been here almost two years. And for the listening audience, would you let them know what the T stand for? I'm sorry? For the listening audience, would you let them know what the T stand for? Taco. For Taco, yeah. yes. Taco Mac. Yes. <laughs> yes. The name is actually no longer abbreviated. It's actually just Taco Mac, not T Mac anymore. So. Okay. Okay. All right. If no other questions, just Madam have, Mayor? have we had any issues from the police department as far with Taco Mac? No, ma'am, we have not. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we're good. Thank you. Come back on uh, on Tuesday. Fantastic. And, uh, Thank everything you. will be good. Great. Thank you. Thank you all. That's all I have, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. We'll move on to Planning and Development Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Mark Adams. Oh, I'm sorry. Community and Economic Development Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Richard Siegel. I apologize. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We do have one item. That's to hold a public hearing to announce that over the next year, the City of Douglasville will be updating its long-range comprehensive plan. Ms. Wright. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Michelle Wright. Planning Department, 6695 Church Street, Douglasville, Georgia, 30134. The state of Georgia enacted the Georgia Planning Act of 1989, which requires local governments to prepare and implement a comprehensive plan. The city of Douglasville adopted its last comprehensive plan on April 7, 2014 and uh, submitted it to the Atlanta Regional Commission in the Georgia Department of Community Affairs and we are required to do this to maintain our qualified local government status. As it stands now, the city of Douglasville is due to update their comprehensive plan by October 31st, 2018. 
The county is also due to update their comprehensive plan by October 31st, 2018. The City of Douglasville and Douglas County will be working with the Atlanta Regional Commission to update their comprehensive plans. Uh, the Atlanta Regional Commission provides this uh, as uh, for no cost to both the city and the county. And this hearing tonight is to announce that we will be starting that process. If there's any questions. Any questions from Mayor Council? I will add, uh, we do have an attachment for our, this agenda item, which is the rules from the uh, Georgia Department of Community Affairs that pertain to this. On page 11 of that, it does say, uh, par part of the procedures is the first required public hearing, is, which is we are having right now. Uh, in fact, uh, this has been advertised for both today and Tuesday, so both of these public hearings will constitute that first required public hearing. Um, anyone who wishes to speak on this, you have five minutes. We'll take an hour's worth of total. Uh, I don't think that things are necessarily going to be for or against. So I will declare this public hearing open and anybody who wishes to speak on the comprehensive plan update can come forward at this time and make your comments. Seeing nobody coming forward, I will close the public hearing and then uh, provide members of the mayor and council the opportunity to speak on this if they wish. Uh, each person has up to 10 minutes to speak. Anyone on the mayor and council who wishes to speak? If not, we will take this up again on Tuesday. Uh, and that's all we have under this committee, Madam Mayor. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. We'll move on to Planning and Development Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Mark Adams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Welcome. Under uh, Planning and Development Committee tonight, we have five items. Uh, the first item being hold a public hearing and consider a request for a variance to reduce the required 15-foot rear yard and east side yard landscape strip in section 3.06.01 of Appendix B of the Development Ordinance for a variance of 10 feet for a remaining requirement of 5 feet on the rear and east side of a lot of 0.591 acres at 7100 Douglas Boulevard, Land Lot 160, District 2, Section 5, Parcel 81, application by Mr. Brad Culpepper. This being a public hearing, I see the applicant is already before us. The applicant would have 30 minutes in order to present uh, their request, and then there would be a time limit of five minutes each for any other person to speak for or against. Please give us your name and address for the record to begin with. My name is Joe Fowler, Post Office Box 49, Douglasville. Here with me is Mr. Brad Culpepper, the applicant, but also here, Mr. Richard Culpepper, who's connected with the developer. To his left is James Fawcett, the owners of the developers of this project, and then behind them, Engineer Theo Stone, Theo, if you'd raise your hand, and to his left, the architect, Alan Bell. This property is the location of the alcoholic beverages store on Douglas Boulevard just before you get to Dunkin' Donuts. And depending on how old you are, you'll remember that this <coughs> used to be a movie theater long time ago. It's probably at least been 30 or 40 years, I expect. Those who are proceeding with this application propose to rebuild in that location, tear down the existing 9,000 square foot building and build an entirely new 5,000 square foot building for the sale of mattresses. They have entered into a long-term agreement with Woodstock Mattresses that's opening 15 different locations or more in the West Georgia, North Georgia, Atlanta Metro, area. Atlanta Metro area. The developers also do a host of other types of developments, including Dunkin' Donuts, Dollar Tree, Hibbit Sports, in the past, Walmarts, and other commercial ventures. The existing building, as I noted, is 9,000 square feet. And if you know a lot about the site, it's to the southeast of the Lowe's. There are dense trees that sort of surround it. This is a recent photo we have. And I'm, I know I can hand it out, but I'm just going to show it to you, though it is small. It is, there's dense trees both on the north and on the east, not on property owned by the current owner from whom my client proposed to buy it, but dense trees, and I'll show you what that looks like. So 
long, long time. The reason for the variance is when the new structure is completed, it triggers the redevelopment code, and that requires a 15-foot setback. Now, first, this is an elevation of what is supposed to be rebuilt. And it's here to do so. And the site plan for what will be built, you should have this in your package. But don't be part of the south and the rebuilding. Essentially what they're doing is they're making a 9,000 square foot building, a 5,000 square foot building, which meets the code requirements on the west, 15 feet. There'll be a 10 feet on the back, a variance of 10 feet on the back, and 5 feet on the side. Now, of course, although we don't own it, Now, the plan, as mentioned, is to completely remove the existing building and rebuild the new building as indicated. We recognize we've got to meet with the building department to work out details about exact building of the structure, but we'll reduce it by 4,000 square feet, add four parking spaces, and to do that, they simply need the variances that have been mentioned. Now, questions from Mr. Culpepper. He can tell you all he knows about this site and what he proposes to do or if there are technical questions, both the engineer and the architect are here. That's our brief presentation. We'd like to respond to any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. Questions of Mr. Fowler? Um, Madam Mayor, you go first. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Fowler, so um, with this new facility that's going to be 4,000 square feet rather than the nine. Five rather than nine. Five reduced rather it by than four, nine. yes, ma'am. Reduced by four, yes, sir. Um, you would need that configuration with the trees gone because of mattresses and you need to come to the rear to pick up your mattress or like furniture or why is that? Why can't you build with the trees there? No is trees. Is it just a, aesthetics? Pardon me. No trees will be removed at all in okay. the least. The trees are not on our property. Okay. What we're doing is providing a circular drive all the way around the building. So we're bringing the building back toward Douglas Boulevard mm -hmm. and bringing it in on both sides, making what was nine, now five. Okay. Now, there is an interesting development. There is a paved drive around the current building. And get this, the current building extends to within a foot of the rear property line. Beyond that, is the paving area that is to the rear of the theater. And that's been there in that current location for probably, well, I don't know who all, I know Joel and Mark may remember when it was first built, maybe some of the other council members, but at least 30 years, probably 40 years. So there's probably adverse possession of that so that they actually would own that strip that is behind their north property line. Mr. Miller may want to weigh in on the legal effects of that in just a moment. But it may be there'd be no need for a variance, but to arrive at that, you would have to probably have a quiet title lawsuit. So the easy thing is to get that structure down in the business that was operating there for all those years and to, be, and to rebuild this new structure as you see it. We just need 10 feet on the back. Trees won't be touched. Okay unless they're touched by the people who own the Lowe's building. And then on the east, it's just five feet variance, but you know the standard trees on that side. Because I was going to talk about impervious surface, but we don't have to talk about that because you're keeping trees yeah, and yes, all the runoff and stuff. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm familiar with this building, and I know there's a large, tall sign on the property that was used to advertise the package store that was there, which is in disrepair, and I've heard complaints from citizens about the appearance, the appearance of that sign. Will it be coming down, or will it be used for the new business? So your address, identify yourself. To I'm Brad Culpepper, Culpepper Development, uh, 224 Bankhead Highway, Carrollton, Georgia, 30117. We were planning on refurbishing that sign and putting a new sign up there, keeping it in the same spot, using one of the poles, but making it a completely brand new sign. And it will be maintained and kept in good condition the Absolutely. whole time. 
Absolutely. No other questions. Uh, Mr. Miller? Yeah. You said, Joe, you said the current building is not in as it sits, is currently not in compliance with the setbacks. That's right. Okay. And this is, what about the sign? Is the sign, as, as it currently stands, in compliance with the sign ordinance? I actually have not evaluated the question about the sign. I may could speak to that a little bit. Um, when they seek approval for their sign, we told them we would give them approval to do that sign based on whatever the city would approve for that. So they will be seeking approval based on your requirements. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Other questions? You know, the only thing I'd like to add is I, I assume with all these changes, the the uh, remove your junk truck that sits out there is kind of a sign will no longer be out in front of the uh, in front of the building there. Unless it's got mattresses in it, I expect it'll be gone. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'll that'll be gone, and the entire site will be refurbished. Oh, it looks and good. And frankly, as a resident, that'll be great. Oh, it looks good. Thank Other you questions? Much. I did have one or two, a uh, little history on the building. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Joe, 1991 was the year that it ceased to be in a, in a theater and became a package store. Uh, I'm almost positive it was somewhere in that neighborhood, late 80s, early 90s. But the property behind it that was an asphalt paved parking lot, I believe, was a part of the theater parking that you, you parked in order to have access to get into the theater from the back side. That is not a part of this application because it's not a part of the property that you're trying to purchase. Separately owned, and when Frank Cunningham built that theater, he had a parking easement in that location. Okay. Um, the owner of that property, is the owner of that property one of the applicants in, in this process? It was actually foreclosed. It's owned by a bank. We're buying it from a lender. We'll build it and lease it to the mattress company. Okay, so if the if the deal does not go through and the purchase is not made, then do we need to consider this condition as a condition of their purchase, I guess would be a, a question for for uh, Ms. Littlefield. In, in our consideration of this variance, if, if these gentlemen do not make the purchase, and we have approved the variance, then is that variance not going to then go with the property? It will. Automatically, be there, so always. we need to consider it being conditional, conditioned upon, as, as our counselor has mentioned, conditioned upon purchase of the property. Um, now there is well, a. You, won't, you, you, you can't put that in as, as a condition of property because then we'll have to go check it later. Uh, what you ought to do is, is deny it now or table it until the purchase takes place I don't think that's just want to make sure condition. where we stand with with the process right thank you so as it sits right now the the setback lines on the building I believe you mentioned mr. Fowler that the rear setback the building is sitting approximately one foot off the rear property line yes sir that's how it was built when it was built as a theater yes sir. And actually there must have been some confusion about the re the rear but north property line because there's an asphalt paved area that's easily 15 feet wide from me to you or more, and it actually goes off at an angle. You may see that actually on the site plan. So it appears that somebody had an incorrect view about the north property line. Well, I know that when it was used as a package store, uh, my father-in-law was actually the one that transferred it from a theater into a package store and operated for many years there, and the back was never even considered usable for any reason, and I'm assuming that was because there was no access in his deal in buying the property at that time to be able to get to the rear. So you had a loading dock for delivery uh, of, of product on the right front corner there, and, and that was the reason for it, I'm sure. Um, but basically right now, the setback is at, we're at zero, and this actually would give you um, more of a rear yard right. on the property. Although you don't have any control over the trees that are off site, whether they would remain there or they would be gone, they serve as a buffer at present. We have had discussions with the owner of that tract concerning an acquisition. None of that is completed or finalized, and I couldn't represent that it may be between now and when this building gets built. We need 10 feet on the back, and we're bringing the building closer toward Douglas Boulevard, so there will be easy passage all the way around. You can see that on the site plan. So on your site plan, would the loading be then from the rear and not from the front of the building, loading and unloading of product? They would have a roll-up door in the rear. In the rear, okay. Any other? Yes, Mr. Miller, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Mr. Chair, one last question. I noticed that on the site plan, you're, I can't see an enclosure around the dumpster. Is it 
there and I'm just not reading it properly. I don't see. And also a little concerned about the clearance around. Is is that been hard verified that you have sufficient clearance around the dumpster for the dump truck? May I ask the engineer? The pick up. Mr. Stone, may he come forward to address both the pad side and the clearances? This is again is Theo Stone, who is the engineer who prepared the drawing. If you'll just identify yourself with your address. Uh, good evening. I'm Theo Stone with Atwell, address 1255 Lakes Parkway, Lawrenceville, Georgia, 30043. We've got the, the dumpster as shown as, as angled. There is room. It's not shown, but there is room. Maybe we should come around. Okay, I just want to make sure. It's our our version's a little fuzzy. It's hard to tell on ours. Okay. So you would have complete access all the way around the building. Okay. Any other questions of the applicant? Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Is there any el anyone else here present for this public hearing that would speak in favor of this application? Okay. Is there anyone here that would speak in opposition to this application? Seeing none, I will close that portion of the public hearing. We will take this item up then on Tuesday uh, at our voting meeting. Thank you very much for your application. Next item, item B, adopt a resolution abandoning a portion of Wood Road. Do we have someone here representing an application for that? You do have two, an exhibit and a consent uh, online. I'm assuming that uh, Mr. Howard Ray must be coming forward. For our viewers' sake, Mr. Ray, please give, you, please give your name and address for the record, although we all know you who you are. Uh, Howard Ray, HRC Engineers, Surveyors, Landscape Architectures, uh, 6554 Church Street, Douglasville, Georgia. So basically, um, during the process of working through uh, phase one and two, as well as phase three um, for the Silverman Bright Star projects uh, and working with Douglas County DOT, um, we have come about with this new, for lack of a better word, we're gonna relocate Wood Road, take some of the curvature out of it, make it more straight line um, and so forth. So uh, basically, we believe that it's the cleanest way is for the city to abandon the current um, right of way um, back to the existing property lines and then to replat the, rev the new wood road. This is a road that really uh, serviced the house that was on it, I believe, right there on the corner of, of Wood Road and Bright Star and had no other homes, no other thoroughfare was not maintained, it has not been servicing any, anything else other than this property, correct? Originally, it came all the way through right. and across Cross Connector and came in behind the um, liquor store there at 5 and 20, mm -hmm. but it appears from photos that around 05, uh, 06, 07, when the connector was built, that road was um, no or sort of cut off, obviously, and so to my knowledge, there's been no maintenance whatsoever from the connector all the way to, uh, along the northern track out to Bright Star since that time. Okay. Council, anyone have questions concerning this uh, resolution request? No questions, Madam Mayor? No okay. Adams? Yes. Has, has the new part been dedicated yet? Uh, no, ma'am. We have submitted a final plat um, that was sort of reconfigures the adjacent properties um, north and south of it as well as right away. So that'll be the next step to come and okay. we just won't, didn't want to get too many horses in the in the stable yet. You won't have a problem if we withhold the quit claim deed until after it's dedicated. Any other comment or question? Wood Road terminate now away from Bright Star. What's the termination point? Uh, you know, based on my understanding, the right of way still extends all the way over to the connector. Um, I'd say, you know, if you're coming from Rose, you cross over five, and you're in that curve, as soon as that curve straightens out, it's my understanding that the old right-of-way is still there. You are, you're just going to call the sack, the 
part you're doing? Uh, we're actually just extending, uh, um, developing to the property line. Um, I know that that's one of the discussions that has been going on in the past um, with, I believe, not only the council, but also with uh, Douglas County DOT about alternative access. In other words, how can we pursue other improvements? Um, and that was sort of tied to the phase two development plan. So <clears throat> basically Douglas County would prefer us to carry out a driveway all the way or a road improvement for the city all the way out that way. And or the other option would be in phase two would be to extend the three lane upgrade of Bright Star all the way to um, 78. So that's the two things the county has sort of asked us one or the other for phase two. <clears throat> all the property up to the property in question now on both sides of the road unless they're sold somehow. That is my understanding, yes, sir. Well, Mr. Ray, um, regardless of whether uh, this right-of-way is abandoned and new one is placed or whether it remains the same, uh, your requirement by the county would, would not be affected if the county said that you have to carry that road completely through and improve another entrance or exit from the connector. The location, the only thing that changes is whether it's straightened out, coming straight into Bright Star, or whether it's curved. Yes, sir. Uh, we, on our east property line, we're matching up with the right, existing right of way, but we are dedicating an additional five feet on the north and south of that, carrying it out to the to what we believe the code requires of a 60-foot right of way in an industrial setting. Okay. Mr. Chairman, yes. I, just, I just wanted to ask about the attachment uh, that shows the road and everything. The fourth page on the attachment, I'm just wondering if that is just in there by mistake. Um, is that the notice of sale? It's in there by mistake. Okay, I just wanted to double check that. Yeah, I don't have that, so. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. uh, I don't think that's connected in any way to this property. <laughs> no. Any other comment or question? Okay, we'll take this item up then on Tuesday. Thank you very much, Mr. Ray. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it, ma'am. Item C, uh, hold a public hearing and consider a request for a change in zoning from DCD Design Concept Development District with a base zone of R4 single family detached and attached townhouse and apartment residential district to R4 single family detached and attached townhouse and apartment residential district with a special land use permit for a church or place of worship, customary accessory uses to a church, and a school, kindergarten, elementary, and secondary private for 15.82 acres at land lot 54, District 1, Section 5, Parcel 142, application by Wilton D. Gregory. Chairman, members of the council, Steven Joe Fowler, again, here with my partner, Bob Kaufman, Post Office Box 49, Douglasville. Bob, my partner, is the chair of the building committee for the church. This, of course, is St. Teresa's Catholic Church organized in 1985 been at its present location across the street from the current applicant property at 4401 Preston Mill Road for over 30 years. The Lord has blessed the church. They are growing, which is a good problem for churches. In fact, one of those blessings is they see a need for a larger sanctuary and Sunday school space, and that's why we're here tonight. When the old Abercrombie Barn site of 26 acres became available, the property was purchased to make way for a total across the street relocation. Plans are underway for a building program that will include a series of buildings and Bob will show you what the overall master plan is for the site. You'll see the sanctuary and an associated educational building and space. That's probably a three to five year time frame that you see there. Meanwhile, we are here tonight on our request to rezone the back 15 acres, not this site, not any of the portion that you've now seen, this is the back 15.81 acre tract that lies just to the north of the main church site that you just saw. That 15.81 acre site was originally platted as part of the Slater Mill subdivision, and what was proposed at that location was 51 houses on 7,500 square foot lots and a detention pond. And of course, you can see its proximity to the church on that site plan. Because of its proximity to the church property, that track has now been purchased in anticipation of incorporating it into the overall site plan for potential future use. There are no current plans for that 15.82 acre site at this point, other than 
the expansion of the previously approved but small, much smaller, detention pond to accommodate, to accommodate the future growth of the subdivision, those 51 lots. Now, concerning current plans that are now ongoing, though that is not on this site, the church has applied for a building permit for an activity building of just over 15,000 square feet for youth activities and storage for furnishings for the future building. Bob can show you that. This is an elevation of what's being proposed, not on the 15.81 acre site that's before you, but just for your information. That is an integral part of the whole church development plan. It is not an accessory structure, though I will tell you, currently they will be, or once it's constructed, if you approve the building permit, there will be storage for church facilities that have already been acquired that will be placed into the sanctuary at a later date. This building will be in the location that you see on the site plan. You see that highlighted in yellow. Again, that's not part of the 15.81 acres that I've been mentioning. Our request tonight is simply to have the zoning for this track revised to match the current church, school, and related uses on the existing 27-acre site they now own. And what that does is it removes the 51 lots entirely and it makes possible future church use possible. Now, sometime back, Mr. Kaufman met with representatives of the subdivision and then he did again last Friday. In response to some of their observations about what's being proposed, the church agrees to the conditions that we sent over to the staff that were approved by PNZ, the PNZ committee, and you probably have those before you just to mention them briefly. There will be a 100 foot undisturbed buffer from the shared property line with the Slater Mill subdivision. And then further, any future building or other structure within this 15.81 acre tract has to be a minimum of 150 feet from the shared property line with the Slater Mill subdivision, 50 feet beyond the undisturbed buffer. These limitations will not apply to sewer or detention facilities that are currently within the setback area. I think there's a sewer line, for example, within that 100 setback area. We also agreed that any exterior lighting or other types of lighting within the subject property, including but not limited to, this is part of the written agreement between us and them, accents, bollards, and pole lights will be directed away from the subdivision and also shielded so that the light is directed downward. And all exterior freestanding light fixtures will not exceed 35 feet in height from the ground level. And then finally, all buildings and other structures that would be on this 15.81 acre parcel will be 35 feet in height to the top of the roof of that structure. That's excluding any steeples or spires, but that's gonna be on the main 27 acres anyway, so I don't actually think that applies. So bottom line, what's happening is the church is using this for future expansion purposes, thank the Lord. It's not for apartments, it's not for townhomes. That was discussed in some degree before planning and zoning. Susan might explain this more thoroughly than I can, but this happens to fit in this particular definition under the R4 classification. There is no intention whatsoever to do anything except to use this for church purposes. Now, Mr. Kaufman has been with the church from the very beginning with respect to this planning, and if you have questions about specifics and dates and times and so forth, he can answer any of those. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Fowler. Mr. Chairman, Yes, I had a couple things. <clears throat> the, uh, Somebody from the church had a meeting <coughs> recently with uh, several of the HOAs over there. Uh, I was unable to go to that meeting, but uh, the report that I got from that meeting uh, uh, led me to believe, or they were led to believe, that the school, the K through eight, right now was not in the plans for the church, just the sanctuary and the eventually in the, uh, the activity center all, mo just about everything you laid out mr fowler was in that report but uh, the school was uh, yeah i'll be happy to respond i i met with the hoas myself okay. and uh bob kaufman 5303 slater mill circle douglasville georgia the um 
Uh, we did a survey a few years ago about would people really like a Catholic school? Overwhelmingly, yes. Well, the next question on the survey was, would you pay eight to 10,000 a year for it? Zoop, and that number went way, way down. And we thought, okay, we really need a, a new church more than anything. And I think you live nearby and you see how many services we have. We have 1,500 families now. <laughs> Saturday night, it's 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock. On Sunday, it's 8, 10, 12, and 1.30. And we're just busting at the seams. And so the church became the number one priority, especially after that survey. I had fielded calls, so did the parish, about are you going to build a high school and all this kind of stuff. Absolutely zero plan for a high school. In order to have a Catholic high school, you have to have a number of elementary schools. You know, you can't just build a high school without having a bunch of feeder schools. There's not a Catholic elementary school within 45 minutes of Douglasville. Um, uh, would we like to have a K-8 at some point? Absolutely. It is not even in the first four phases of our plan. The first phase is this building, uh, and you saw the picture. It's kind of designed, kind of like, look like an REI exterior. Um, and, you know, and, and that's because it's the farthest away from the road, so it's, we can get farther away from that Roman Gothic look of the church. Um, but it's going to be used by the youth, so we kind of wanted to make it look cool, you know. And about half of the gym area is going to be used for storage because, um, believe it or not, we have a lot of the furnishings for the church, church already. We already have altars, the baptismal font, the ambo, a thing called the reredos, which is behind our altar. They're all carved out of marble. They're in from overseas. They're absolutely stunning. Um, the Stations of the Cross, all these things. We just need a place to put all this stuff. The goal uh, for the second phase, which is the church and parish hall, um, is to have a capital campaign starting in 18 months uh, from now. Um, we're hoping with this building we'll start to get the energy going. We have all the money for this right now and for all the site work, uh, but then we'll start for the church and the parish hall. The next building after that is the one on the site plan. It lies in between. That's just a education building about the size of our building right now that we have on our premises, which if you look at our church, it's right to the left. Um, has about 12 classrooms for Sunday school and meetings and you know Boy Scouts and uh, adult meetings, things like that at night. So. Question of that intersection, which is not really an intersection, but eventually it will be. It's a three-way stop now. Right. It's been misaligned for the longest time ever since Saddlebrook was put in and the stables were over there. So my question is, uh, as part of this construction, will that be realigned so that it's, you know what I'm saying? I don't know to the extent it's going to be realigned. I know that we're putting A-cell, D-cell lanes in. Um, we also have... There's a loop road, so that won't be the only exit. It's also coming out almost directly across from our, our church right now. There's a loop road that's going to, as You'll part of this site. Two road. entrances then. Two, enter, two entrances now. Right now we only have one. <clears throat> Other questions? Yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. All right, Mr. Kaufman, you have to stay with me. It's going to be a, a roundabout, but I'll get to a point. Sure. <laughs> I just see in here where there's a letter from the Archdiocese, and uh, Most Reverend Wilson Gregory signed over. It seems like the attorney for what I'm getting at is like our church, it isn't actually owned by the people in the church, it's the denomination. Right. But pastors get assigned to different churches, overseers. So is he going to have, is he going to be the overseer over this facility? And if he's moved since he had to have. Um, authorization to sell or do anything how does that work so yeah with the city it doesn't go with him or the person it stays with the church or the denomination or how yeah it's a good work? question because every faith is a little bit different and you know i run into this all the time in my real estate practice when banks make loans to churches we already got to figure out how they're organized the catholic church takes title in the name of the bishop wilton gregory is the archbishop of Atl of the archdiocese of atlanta okay and it stays in the name of the bishop and his, his successors in office. So it is always will be owned by the, the Catholic Church unless the church decides to sell the property. I see. Um, occasionally, not in the South, 
but up in the north, there have been some parishes that have closed, and the earth, you know, they sold some of those properties. Uh, but down here, we're, we're busting at the seams. That's because up north, there's a Catholic church about every 200 yards, you know. So that, that makes sense. That's what I have, Mr. Chairman. I just was curious about that. Thank you. Mr. Miller? Mr. Coppin, as, you, as your church shifts over across the street to the new facility, what are your plans for the old church? Sell it for as much as we can get. Eventually. Not going to retain it for usage. No, no. It, it all, it, once we get all the way across, meaning once we have the, ch the church, the parish hall in this building, then we'll put our property up for sale to hopefully some other church. It's worked out great for us for 30 years. So. Okay. Other questions of the applicant? Thank you, Mr. Kaufman, Mr. Fowler. Uh, anyone else here that would speak in this public hearing in uh, support of this item? Not. Is there anyone here that would speak in opposition to this item? If so, please come forward. Come forward, Mr. Abercrombie. We'll be glad to hear from you, regardless of which. I just have to. I just have to differentiate. Uh, Mike Abercrombie. My address is 5328 Presley Place. My property borders this property, and I probably have the largest frontage to this property. That and my my aunt also has the property up on the far end. Um, my issue really is not with the church. It predates the whole situation. The 15 acres that they acquired or were attempting to acquire had an issue with it all along. Uh, that's the 15 acres, which was the expansion division of Slater Mill subdivision. That 15 acres, the reason it sat there for so many years was because there were numerous issues with the drainage pond and the fact that the just the bare land with no homes and no solid surfaces was not able to bear the water that was coming upon it from namely the farm up above because there was no retention pond we had a uh, kind of a loose before retention ponds we just called it a pond but there was a pond there but one of the first things that happened when the church acquired the property is that was busted up because Obviously, they're, they're making way towards prog progress on this. So first thing I want to say is I'm all in support of what the church is doing as far as their property. The issues with the 15 acres predate the church ever having them. Um, but I see this as an opportunity that we need to handle now um, because simply they're changing the whole dynamics of this area, not just their 25 acres, which was purchased from my father, but the 15 acres that was in between. So this 15 acres, like I say, had a very small retention pond. It could not even handle the water source that was coming on it from no roadways, no homes, no anything. The drainage pond, about two years ago, we had the large flood, everybody recalls. The pond broke. I called WSA and asked for an engineer to come out and made them aware of it. Uh, WSA sent an engineer out. He looked at it. Um, said he agreed with me said he'd pass it on to his supervisors and he was promptly given or had another job in another jurisdiction and left and i never heard from him since that's not his fault but wsa never followed up on it either um we've been steadily i have my dad not so much a big proponent but ever since he acquired the property which has been about seven years ago i'd taken an interest in it because i knew it was it was going to come to me um and I wanted it to maintain and, and be better. So we've been working this process for a while. Um, I contacted WSA just this past week, asked them about it, um, asked them you know, if they had any plans of appearing at this zoning meeting uh, or the, the, I'm sorry, the zoning meeting last week or this council meeting. They said, no, that's not what they normally do, although that's not the same information I got from your planning and zoning. Supposedly, there is somebody from WSA that comes to these meetings. Um, but the whole issue is simply, this has been overlooked for a number of years. There's a road now, Hamill Court, which is going to be abandoned, okay? It has a culvert coming over to now what butts into their retention pond, which they're using the 15 acres as the retention pond for the 25 acres above, which is fine with me. I think that's great. The problem is the smaller retention pond that's there is still there. 
it's not being maintained, it's broke, it's, it needs to be corrected. Now, on top of that, the water from the culvert situation, the road there, which is abandoned now, okay, it has barricades, and I'm gonna show you pictures that I have of this area too as well. The road's abandoned, Slater Mill subdivision for a while now has erected barricades. I don't know who they belong to or how they got there. Um, there's, I'm not sure what jurisdiction or where they came from, but patrol cars that are stationed at the end of the road there. So this issue is not somewhere that if you lived in that subdivision, you want your kids just to walk down to the end of Hamill Court and play off the bridge. As we all know, the situation down at Presley and Slater Mill not eight months ago, um, they had to rebuild that whole culvert there because the water running through it blew out the other side. This is a continuation of the same area. This is the same principle that's happening with that culvert. I see I'm running short on time, so what I'm gonna show you here are the pictures. I think they speak volumes. Hand them to, hand them to Ms. Hampton, right. if you would, uh, Mr. Abercrombie. She'll distribute them to us. Thank you, Mr. Abercrombie. Appreciate you bringing that in for us. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. This, this Thank is you. for you to keep as well. Thank you very much. So, uh, again, are the we issue, on time, Ms. Acker? I'm sorry. Okay. I, I just, just to summarize, like I say, uh, you know, the issue, I am actually a detriment on my property. But my main concern is not to impose hardship on the church. I'm all for the church coming in. I probably have over a thousand foot of frontage uh, in that picture there of my property that they're coming into. Mr. Kaufman's been great. They've been informing me about things going along. But unfortunately, this 15 acres that they acquired is a bundle of issues. And that's why they acquired it. It couldn't be expanded on that subdivision, but it needs to be handled now. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Do we have others that would like to speak concerning this item that have come in? Anyone else? If so, please come forward. Give us your name and address for the record. Not seeing anyone. Was Ms. We do have a staff. Uh, Michelle has some additional item, um, information she'd like to provide. Okay. Now, do um, I need to close the public hearing before we hear from staff concerning this? Think so. Yes. Is he given that time to respond? Sure, sure, please. Well, have, 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 has the applicant used all of his 30 minutes, I guess would be my question. Then I will allow you to respond. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you. And, and I appreciate Mr. Abercrombie um, you know, being here. And, and we met him out there last Friday, myself and the greater contractor, to see what the issue is. And I was already well aware of it because I live 300 yards downstream. Um, right next to Mr. Uh, Abercrombie is one of our parishioners and a member of our building committee, Ken Flick. Right across the creek is a member of our building committee, uh, uh, Proctor. And then I'm 200 yards down. I've been there 20 years. In the last eight years, that creek has tripled in size. And those culverts were put in like in 2005. This all started, and I've spoke to WSA again last week about this, with the construction of the county transportation facility, which is upstream, up the creek, 
under I-20 and right across from I-20. It then accelerated with the building of the jail and accel accelerated with the extension of uh, Dura Lee Lane, that road. And all that additional impervious, sur impervious surface has created additional flow. Um, I asked our engineer, uh, Mr. Abercrombie had a concern that if the water flows through the culvert, it's gonna pick up speed. He's absolutely correct. If it's a few inches off the, off the base of the culvert. But once you get a big flow of water, it doesn't matter what it's going over, it's coming. And I've been down there uh, in the pouring rains and have seen it just flow, I mean, this deep in that creek. And enough to where, as y'all know, it's blown out that intersection now twice, uh, down below at Slater Mill and Presley Mill. We are gonna be meeting with our engineer again out there Tuesday afternoon, um, after our usual construction meeting, It'd be like four or five o'clock, and we're gonna bring him down to the culvert to see if there's anything we can do around that culvert to help slow the flow because, <clears throat> like I said, he ain't the only one. I mean, I've seen a bunch of trees in a, off my yard and I'm down below there and my next door neighbor, Blankenship, said the same thing when I talked to him. So we've, we're doing our best to address that issue. Uh, you mentioned the setbacks, also, the 100 feet and the 150. Yeah, yeah, and, and again, we have the 100 and 150 foot setbacks one thing that uh, Mr. Abraham, you mentioned about the, the pond that is not being repaired yet, we just haven't got to it yet. This site that we're have, our pond we're putting in, we're actually gonna utilize two ponds, where it's gonna flow into a big pond, then that'll go into the smaller pond, because we expressed our concern to him about do not increase the flow in this doggone creek, because we all live right here, especially. Um, and so our engineer actually, I forgot about that when we met the other day that we're gonna actually gonna have a dual pond system. So then, Mr. Coppin, if I hear you correctly, your engineers are addressing the issue not only to take care of the hydrology issues on the 15 acres and your property that you already own, but also would include the pond that exists that is in ill repair, because would you then assume ownership? Is that pond also on this property? It is, that's correct. Okay, so you then assume ownership of it along with the new pond that you are constructing as we speak. Correct. So it sounds as though, Correct. if I hear you correctly, and everyone that has made comment, the, the issue is being considered and looked at in order to be able to make sure that it's not worsened by any development of whatever type on this property, if any. Absolutely, and we're hoping to make the flow even a little bit slower. I, I just don't know if we can do it, given how much is now coming down that creek. I understand. With all the development. Okay, um, so. thank you for that clarification. Is there anyone else here that would speak uh, in opposition uh, or? Middle of the road, as Mr. Abercrombie was on the issue uh, concerning this. Mr. Abercrombie, just in respect to clarification, uh, we'll allow it. Come forward. Just, just one minor clarification. And again, this is no detriment to them. It's, the church didn't cause it. Mr. Kaufman didn't cause it. It was already done. Yes. The, the issue is with the creek widening and it going beyond the normal bounds, and it's at, let's say, 100 feet. It's, it's hard to say. It's ranging. The bank of the property right there, and this is something I discussed with Mr. Kaufman as well. We actually, he physically walked down there with me. The bank is being eroded away by the water coming down, okay? Now, their large retention pond is probably 50 feet back. If you recall what you just said about a 100-foot buffer zone, overall, yeah, their large retention pond is. The small retention pond, as I mentioned to you two years ago, when it broke out, is only about 10 feet from the creek, 10, maybe 15. So if the erosion continues at the rate that it's going and there's no buffer rock placed around the creek or we don't address the issue of the water accelerating through the culverts, it will break away the smaller retention pond and it will cease to exist in maybe a year or two because there's not going to be any amount of rock or anything that they can do to it that's gonna fix it if you don't have a bank. Got gotcha. you. I just want to clarify that. Thank so, you. Appreciate yeah, that I, clarification. Part of the issue that they're facing. Okay. Okay. I will then close the public hearing for tonight, and I'm assuming that staff, um, Ms. Michelle Wright, wanted to address. Michelle Wright, 6695 Church Street, Douglasville, Georgia. Uh, I did make contact with the WSA today with uh, Scott Wilder and um, Brian Keel. They did provide me with an email. Uh, talking about this, um, I can either read you the email or I can ha have it provided to you 
for uh, Tuesday night's meeting discussing these issues. Can you give us a brief synopsis? Um, Not reading the whole thing. <laughs> okay. uh, well, basically, they, uh, they understand that the adjacent property owners wishes the culverts and Slater Mill to be removed. The WSA has analyzed the situation and determined it is strictly a private property issue. Since the city never accepted the road over the creek as public right away, that is essentially the church's private road or driveway in their private culverts on the creek. WSA has had conversations with representatives of both parties and explained that this is a private property matter to them to work them out among themselves. WSA has no stake whether the culverts remain or removed. Um, let's see, the, um, the WSA has reviewed and approved the development plans for this property, including erosion control and stormwater, and the city has issued a land disturbance permit for the development that is currently underway. So, but I will have this letter provided for you to, for Tuesday. Thank you. Comments, Chair? Mr. Fowler, don't you represent the WSA? <laughs> Joe, come to the come to the mic. I represent Water Sewer Authority. I didn't know. I don't know what your suggestion may be, but I had nothing to do with that letter. Didn't even know it was being done. But let me also say this: they're not going to listen to anybody about stormwater regulations except the engineers. So if you and I got together and attempted to impact what they're going to say about stormwater, it's going to take somebody above our pay grade to get that done, I can assure you. No implication there. I was just thinking you may give us better, uh, better understanding, <laughs> better understanding of what, <coughs> yeah, what the situation was. Anytime you disturb was. the soil like that, you better have compliance with the Green Book. And if you don't, they're going to cite you. And I've seen them do that. Not through any part of our office, but I'll see them cite them in a heartbeat if they violate the stormwater regulations. But it's, it seems as though WSA has got no responsibility here or suggestions of... You just, if you disturb over a certain amount of acreage, you have to comply with stormwater regulations. What he's talking about is whether or not WSA can require the church or the subdivision who currently own that property to do something about the bridge. That is the specific question. Stormwater is already being considered on the site by WSA before they turned a yard of that dirt out there. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. Any other question or comment? Appreciate all of those that have come forward. We will take this up on Tuesday night and we'll move on to item D. Hold a public hearing and consider a request for a special land use permit for a church or place of worship for property zone CG General Commercial for 0.21 acres, how, 6207 Highway 92 in Landlot 51, District 1, Section 5, Parcel 16. Application by Linda Lozier. Good evening. My name is Linda Lozier, 3754 Tackett Road, Douglasville, Georgia. Good evening, ma'am. I'm Gwendolyn Jackson, 8507 Westchester Drive, Douglasville, Georgia, 30134. Thank you for coming in. Ladies, would you state your uh, information that you have for us concerning this application? Yes, we was just trying to get a, a permit to uh, open a church. It's a very small building, and I actually had to move in that in uh, emergency situation. So I'm really looking for a bigger building for the youth, and it's actually a church for the young people. So I'm trying to get... Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lozier, I have a question just to familiarize everyone. I have looked over my paperwork this afternoon at length, and I need help in, in establishing the location exactly so that we as, as citizens here know where this is on Fairburn Road. It's next to the, uh, the bank, Hamilton. Hamilton, Hamilton Bank. It used to be a pawn shop to the right of it, and it's right up in there. Uh, standing in the street would be to the left of it then? Yes. Uh -huh. Up the hill, closer yeah, the toward hill, downtown? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, yes, I, I thought I had mm -hmm. figured that out. Thank you very much. You'll miss it if you ride by, it's real small. So. Yes, ma'am, I understand. <laughs> I believe it used to be the TP restaurant at one point. Is that right, Mr. Sam Davis? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so you are wanting to get a special land use permit for a place of worship to move to that property? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions of the applicant, please? 
Okay. Is there anyone here that would speak in addition to the applicant in support of this? If not, is there anyone here that would speak in opposition to the application? If not, I'll close the public hearing and we will take this item up on Tuesday for a vote. Thank you. Thank you for coming in, ladies. Mr. Chairman, I did want to ask about a special land use permit. Are they going to be required to have that for time frame or? I would assume we would ask that question if they were. Uh, ladies, would you, I'm sorry, uh, I, we do have a question. Uh, Madam Mayor has a question concerning the uh, special land use permit, and I'm assuming that that would be a question concerning the ownership of the property. You would be a tenant, is that correct? Tenant, yes. Okay, so uh, Madam lease. Mayor, you were asking as far as the length of that and yes, this sir. being the first time we would Length then. And, and the lease and how all that works so that we wouldn't get them into that situation. Do you have a lease at, at present? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And the length of that lease, the please? The length of it ends in May, but I'm going, I met the landlord last Saturday, and we're going to do a contract because he's, he's wanting to give me some more additional. Right now I have 1,300 square feet, and it's a building in the middle, middle and it would give me more space. Okay. And it would be like 1,800 square feet. So that would be, and we cool. want, he wanted to do like a contract not just a year's lease, he wanted to do something longer. Okay, then what we're, what we're trying to establish is the length that we would need for the special land use permit to run concurrent with your lease. So Yes, it's a year, year by year. Okay, thank you. That's my question. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Apologize for asking you to come back. We'll take that up then on Tuesday night. Item D, we'll go to item E. Someone don't let me run past this now. Item E, authorize the mayor to sign change order number one to the city's professional services agreement of August 24th, 2017 with Jacobs Engineering Group Incorporated to increase the scope of work to include drafting a proposed new unified development code ordinance at a cost increase of $261,262. Um, yes, sir. Mr. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Um, as we pre previously mentioned at meetings before, um, we're getting ready to start the process for a rewrite of our um, zoning and development code. Um, this cost has been allocated in your budget. Um, this change order would um, initiate that process. Questions? I know that we've been discussing this for some time, and this would basically be an extension, I understand, of the uh, contract with Jacobs in to go for lack of a better term, to the next step on our behalf, correct? That is correct. Is there any discussion? Okay, we'll take that up then on Tuesday night. And Madam Mayor, I believe that's all that we have tonight under planning and development. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll move on to Parks and Recreation Committee. That's chaired by Council Member Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business tonight under Parks and Rec. Thank you, sir. We'll move on to Finance Committee. That's chaired by Council Member Mark Adams. No business tonight, Madam Mayor. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Information Technology Committee, chaired by Councilmember Terry Miller. No business at this time, Madam Mayor. Thank you, sir. Maintenance and Sanitation Committee, that's chaired by Councilmember Mike Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have one item tonight, and that is to authorize the mayor to sign a contract for use of school facilities with the Douglas County Board of Education for rental of facilities at the Douglas County High School on May 30th, 2018 through June 3rd, 2018 for use in connection with the 2018 Penny Henry Hydrangea Festival. I think, uh, Mr. Roberts, are you gonna, or I think you just passed that off um, very quickly. Chan, come, come on up. Hi, Chan Weeks, Director of Keep Douglasville Beautiful, 8578 Club Drive. Um, we are asking for the, um, city to sign an agreement to use the Douglas County High School for this year's Penny McHenry Hydrangea Festival and move it away from the Douglas County Courthouse. Okay, any questions from council? Uh, Mr. Siegel? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Penny McHenry, McHenry Hydrangea Festival is its own entity, isn't it? It is. Why would they not be contracting with the school system? What's the involvement of the city? Keep Douglas Feel Beautiful has um, gotten more involved this year but the hydrangea festival came to us to ask if the city could do this because of the insurance policy that the the school board requires they require over a million dollar um, insurance policy that the hydrangea festival does not carry but does this represent our sponsorship or what is our actual relationship to the festival compared to previous years other than being the one contracting with the school system 
that is still kind of undecided at this point. Uh, we, are, we are working with the festival just to have more of involvement as far as Keep Douglasville Beautiful goes, to have more of a presence. Um, and, and Keep Douglas, just to follow up, Mr. Siegel, and I saw your hand, Madam Mayor, but just to follow up, uh, it's my, you know, the Keep Douglasville Beautiful is an independent 501c3 uh, that is associated with the city but is separate from the city, correct? Right. Well, Enterprise. A, a lot of what brings this to us is it's really a placeholder for the event. Um, and so we're still working um, with uh, the Hydrangea Festival uh, representatives on this. And the issue came up that uh, they were unable to get the agreement because of the insurance requirement is uh, my understanding of it. And that the city can meet that. Uh, but there's still a lot of discussion to happen. But it's, it's a placeholder. Um, because they're moving it away from the Douglas County uh, courthouse properties. Mr. Um, Chairman, uh, could this be a part of our um, sponsorship or a part of our, uh, do, we, do we not have a budget item that we, that we actually uh, make a donation to or we're involved as a part of our budget process with that festival? Um, we haven't had um, a direct line item that we've done, but we have uh, done in-kind services. We've done advertising services. Um, it's, it's been a while since we've actually um, had direct financial sponsorship, um, but we have since the inception of the um, event, we have been uh, a partnership at some level. And my understanding, the event's been around here for now for 11 years. This will be the 11th. This will be the 11th. Yes. Year. So I'm... Um, uh, does that satisfy your question? Yes. yes thank okay. You. I skipped the Madam Mayor and oh, sorry no about problem. that. No problem, Mr. Chairman. It, it has from the authorized for me to sign the document, but the document has Dr. Gordon Pritz as a superintendent on the, the uh, school system. So if we can change that to um, Superintendent Trent North. We can. Uh, that actually came to us a, a few months ago, okay. uh, probably September. I'm not sure, but it, it was probably right around, around the early part of the school year, and I did not uh, see that, but uh, we can get that corrected. And if there's any other questions, uh, I can have responses prepared for Tuesday night. Anything else? I just, uh, I missed, why are we moving it away from the courthouse? Is it space, or they just want us to move, or? Uh, I was gonna ask that question, too. I believe the well you know I probably don't need to say what I believe so <laughs> let me have an answer for you on that Tuesday night um, uh, because sometimes I believe a lot of things and uh, but I will I will have you a response to that question on Tuesday night that's a promise and is there a fee for the high school there there is a spoken fee there but the hydrangea festival representatives say that they will cover the fee Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not looking at it, but I believe there's a there's a fee of, a, fee of about a about of a maximum of around five hundred dollars, and sir. that's to cover the school board, particularly Douglas County High School, to have janitorial services, mm -hmm. um, to have someone there on site, so we don't just have access to the school. Uh, so there'll be a school presence, and so we will be paying, or they will be paying for that employee to be there and for the cleanup afterwards. Uh, Mr. Chairman, one last question. What does a million dollar liability uh, insurance policy cost for something like this? And is that budgeted? I mean, it's... It's an existing policy, Mr. Watts. I'm sorry? It's an existing policy. Oh. We have it anyway for other purposes. Any other questions? Yes, um, Councilman um, Miller, just a comment. I just wanted to... Um, just caution because we haven't done this before with with the hydrangea um festival i mean we have been um, active but i just want to be mindful that there have been other nonprofits who have um asked the city to work with them and the douglas county school board so i, I know that the hydrangea hydrangea festival is a nonprofit, and and so is the um well it's an entity i don't know if they're a nonprofit, but the keep douglasville beautiful is so i just want to be mindful that in the future, if we have other nonprofits that work with the city and they want to do something with Douglas County School Board, how are we going to, how are we gonna do that? I just wanna, because we didn't have a 
yes or no. It was just brought that we're going to do it and other people have asked us to do it and we didn't, you know, we haven't taken on their, their cause. Well, so. I'm sorry, Amy, any other questions or comments? And, uh, and then, of course, the Hydrangea Festival will um, pick up the cost, but the city's um, insurance, if, God forbid, if something happens, puts us at liability. Is that correct, Mr. Roberts? Is that? Yes. I mean, that's generally the issue that we're running into is the Hydrangea Festival does not have a million dollar insurance policy. The Board of Education is requiring the entity to have a million dollar um, insurance policy. Now, my question then becomes, does uh, Keep Douglasville Beautiful, uh, do they have the insurance policy or is it under the city? Um, Keep Douglasville Beautiful then is covered through the city's insurance policy. So it still rolls back to the city. So well, I'm signing a check. The so city would be the party if, in this matter rather than KDB. I'm sorry. The city would be the party in this contract rather than KDB. Okay. Um, and so for liability purposes, we would, we would be holding the bag for any incidents or occurrences that your words, not mine. <laughs> but, uh, but that is part of the reason we're here in January because the event is in June and if there are issues related to anything, even this, uh, now's the time to talk about them. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, if you don't mind, myself, um, Greg and Ms. Weeks, we can talk after the meeting. I think I have a, a solution that we can take, we can not take action on this item on Tuesday and come back with an alternative solution. I think that would make everybody else more comfortable. You're reading my mind, Ms. Ms. Hampton. <laughs> um, I think that'll be a, a I'm not going to uh, suggest that it be on the consent agenda by any Please means. Please don't. Um, so th that's all we have. Mr. Chairman, can I add one more comment uh, on that? Yes, you may. Uh, I don't want it to seem like we are not in support of the Hydrangea Festival. I think everybody up here <coughs> recognizes what a great thing it is for our community. So I just want to make sure that that part is clear for anybody who's watching on TV and those here in the audience. And Mr. Siegel, I'd, I'd like to follow up with that. I think it makes sense to bring it in more into the downtown. That's where the neighborhood has been supported of it for years, inviting folks into their homes and into their gardens. So, but it does concern me to put our insurance company on the line. So I think we can uh, look into that a little further and address that. It will not be on the uh, agenda for Tuesday, as I understand, but uh, city staff will be looking into additional concerns and hopefully coming up with a good solution. All right. Madam Mayor, that's all we have tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Handled that very well. We'll move on to Transportation Committee. That's shared by Dr. LaShawn Verdanley. Thank you, um, Madam Mayor. There are no written items under transportation. However, um, at our 4 o'clock committee meeting, um, we did discuss the, um, the cost and the items as it relates to the curb and gutters that, are, that have been constructed um, along Dallas Highway. And our city manager did let us know that she would be, well, actually it was my recommendation that we would um, move forward with obtaining plans from engineers um, in order for WSA to get involved. Also, um, to our city manager, I wanted to ask, what is the timeline after you could request the plans for the engineer? Um, actually, I'm gonna speak with Mr. Shiraz tomorrow um, and have uh, Ms. Wright submit all the information directly to his office uh, so that he can review that with his staff so hopefully we can have a response to you at least on Tuesday night about their cursory review. Um, but Michelle probably will have to contact the engineering firm to let you know a definitive timeline on when they think they can get those plans and I'm not quite certain if she can get that by Tuesday or not. Right, yeah, I didn't think we could get the plans but um, once you speak with them, can you just please keep me abreast of when can we get this item back on the um, council agenda so that the residents um, will be made aware? And also I noticed that there are two business owners that are in the audience and I just welcome you if you'd like to, um, when the mayor makes the notation that you can make comments under um, citizens comments to do that if, you're, if you would like to. No other items, Madam Mayor, thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. 
So we'll move on to um, number 13, which is Personnel and Organization Committee. That's chaired by Mayor Pro Tem Richard Siegel. Lucky number 13. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We do have one item. Yes, sir. That is to adopt an ordinance to enact revised chapters two and three of the Personnel Policies and Procedures Ordinance to revise the definition of pay schedule and to authorize the city manager to amend employee job descriptions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tia Austin, City of Douglasville, 6695 Church Street, Douglasville, Georgia, 30134. This particular item before you, um, as we dis discussed in committee's meeting, um, the first part is to amend the definition of pay schedule as it relates to our personnel policies and procedures. Um, we are um, have currently adopted um, pay schedules. You have approved pay schedules, as they are called, which is including inclusive of our um, job dis description titles, our pay grades, our salary ranges uh, for the city of Douglasville. So we would like to amend that to include that terminology in our PPP, uh, our policies and procedures, uh, to stand as the definition of the pay schedule. Also to amend um, the city manager's personnel authority to be able to approve uh, current title job descriptions and those responsibilities within that current job title. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Comments or questions from Mayor and Council? Just for clarification, um, if I may, Mayor Pro Tem um, Siegel, thank you. Thank you, Tia. Just to clarify, for this particular item is just to pretty much clean up um, some of the job descriptions. But I know that in our last meeting, last week we um, discussed that um, it was recommended that our city manager would have the authority to change a job description. Is that to her, it, would that be to a discretion when, when you see that it needs to be changed and it not come before council? Well, we would definitely work with the department directors to see if, the, um, if there's any assessments of jobs that have, um, you know, a sufficient amount of changes that would need to, to come before the city manager or a minimal amount of changes. Um, we would do our research and make sure that those are vetted before bringing those to the city manager's attention, and then um, she will have that authority to um, either approve or deny those changes based on uh, current trends and research and the recommendation of the HR department. And as I mentioned in our committee meeting, um, we have a really good, great HR director. Your team does very well, and I'd say the same to our city manager. I just want to make sure that job descriptions are very sensitive. Um, and in my opinion, when job descriptions are changed, I just want to make sure that we're not doing a knee-jerk um, change because of personalities or because you know somebody got mad. Um, I don't want to look down the line and we're looking at discrimination or somebody's hitting us with that. So I look at that very, very serious. And I want to make sure that if there is something that does come up, that it does come before council. Um, and we trust that our staff that you would bring that to us if need be. Yes, ma'am. I do understand your mm -hmm. concern. And, and you can hold me personally accountable for that. But I definitely will make sure that we follow um, all employment, employment laws, consult with our, legal, our staff attorney, and then just make sure that our city manager is in agreement as well. But we will do the vetting process. I don't have any other comments. Thank you. Anyone else? Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Chairman, and so in conjunction to what uh, Councilman Bordanley said about the job description changing, we did say the job title would not change, and if the title were to change, that would affect the organizational chart, and that would come before mayor and council. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. That is currently how, um, how this um, amendment is written. Is yes, written. ma'am. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. And we Chairman. could decide at some point in the future to change that as well, mm -hmm. to allow uh, org chart changes and job title changes to be approved by the city manager or not. Yeah, you could if that's your pleasure. In the future, right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Chairman. Anyone else? Uh, this, this change in ordinances affects the charter, right? Or does it? No, not the charter. Uh, the, the, this okay. is the personnel policy okay. and procedures ordinance, which is in our code of ordinances. Any other questions? All right, we'll take this up on Tuesday. Did you want to mention that other item with the Atlanta Business Chronicle or to save that for a sure. later time? I'd be more than happy to, unless we'd like to mention it under um, staff reports. Um, so just for the viewing audience and our mayor and council in the audience behind me, um, the city of Douglasville uh, is once again a finalist for the 2018 Atlanta Business Chronicle's Healthiest Employer Award. We did take that award last year as first place and the very first municipality uh, to win that. So I think we have a little competition this year for 2018 um, but um, we are certainly still on the move with wellness and uh, making sure that our employees are staying informed and trained and um, increasing that engagement as much as we can so I have no doubt that we'll place uh, but we're looking to bring home number one <laughs> I know two times in a row yes ma'am so we will definitely keep you all posted 
and we would like to invite you if you'd like to attend um, just let me know and I will purchase tickets for um, whoever would like to attend and be um, you know your presence um, at that particular event what is the date the, on that it is February the gosh I think it's the 16th the 15th excuse me it is the 15th so on Thursday it's at the Georgia World Aquarium or the Georgia Aquarium it's gonna say the World Aquarium what time 7 30 to 9 30 so it's very early a.m. morning yes a.m. 225 okay. Baker Street. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That's all I have, Madam Mayor. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, we'll move on to Ordinance and Intergovernmental Committee. That's chaired by Council Member Mike Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business tonight. Thank you, sir. Education and Training Committee. That's chaired by Council Member Samuel Davis. Madam Mayor, no items at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Communications Committee, also chaired by Council Member Samuel Davis. Madam Mayor, no items at this time. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other business to come before uh, council tonight from council members? Thank you. Not seeing any. We'll go to reports. Um, city Attorney, Mr. Joel Dotson. No business, Madam Mayor. Thank you, sir. Chief Assistant City Attorney, Ms. Susan Littlefield. No business, Madam Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Chief of Police. That's not the chief. That's uh, Major J.R. Davidson. How are you? You have anything, sir? No business, Madam Mayor. Thank you, sir. City Manager, Ms. Marcia Hampton. Only thing I have to add is just a reminder, um, offices will be closed on Monday in observance of Martin Luther King Day holiday for those who celebrate by giving back as a day of service. Enjoy your day of service, and we will see you on Tuesday. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now is the opportunity for comments from citizens and delegates. We welcome you to come to the podium. We'd love to hear from you. When you come forward, please give your name and address for the record. And we are attentive and excited to hear from you. You have endured the entire meeting. It's Mr. White. Hello, my name is Earl White. Uh, I own a business at uh, 8127 Dallas Highway. Uh, my reason for being here today is to uh, thank the, the city council and uh, Ms. Wright, I think, with DOT for the sidewalks that was, that's being put in in the Highway 92 area. Uh, my only um, one thing I just want to add to that is that uh, not only do we, the people in the area, uh, appreciate the sidewalks, but there are a few other items that we, I would hope that and encourage the council to uh, look into prop and po possibly helping to enhance. We have, a, I think, more or less a um, infrastructure problem. So uh, not only do we need sidewalks, but we need the inf some infrastructure looked at because heavy rains, water just kind of just flood our parking lots and yards. So we'd like that to be looked at as well. But thanks for everything that's been done so far and any implementation of enhancements that could be added would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, thank you, Mr. White. Curb and gutters, that's what you need. Yes, sir, thank you. Mr. Danley, that's Mr. Homer Danley coming. You have a, for Black History Facts coming up uh, for February, that first African-American city council member. I remember looking in Lisa Cooper's book on the history of Douglasville, you had an afro. <laughs> that was then, <laughs> and this yes, is sir. now. Could you give us your name and address, please? <laughs> Thank you all so much for allowing me to say something. I, first of all, I wanted to comment on that we do need some curbing and guttering on the north side. And I also wanted to, if you would have the city or somebody from the city to look at the first sidewalk project that was put in. I'm the owner of a property at 86 to Dallas Highway and the quality of the work and the job that was done is just really was not up to par and if you would have someone, I don't know who the contractor was then, but as we get new sidewalks, we could kind of assure that they would do a better job than some of those and, and sidewalks without curbing and guttering just creates another issue because now when that water does not go into the ground, <coughs> it's that sidewalk and then it causes more erosion. So if you all would please consider that. And just kind of a comment on something else, uh, back to the Hydrania Festival. I think one of the reasons that they were going to Douglas County High School was because Douglas County High School had a horticulture program and now it's closed, but they do have a full 
greenhouse there. And I remember riding by during that time and just look at the flowers, but I think that was one of the reasons that they were there. And also that um, um, policies, um, liability policies are very cheap. I mean, you can buy them for a specific things that we wanted to last from June 1st to July, whenever, and they're, they're very, very cheap. And I think that was really, you know, good information. And I'm just throwing it out there just from stuff that I do on a regular basis, having to get them for, having been in the music business, just had to get them for concerts and all these kind of things, and they're not real expensive. Um, other than that, you all continue to do a good job and just keep us in mind on the North side. Yes, sir. Please give us your, we know you, but we need for the record, Mr. Homer, if you can give us your name and address for the record, please. Homer Danley, and my uh, living address is 3020 Mason Creek Road in Winston, but we do have a lot of investments in here in the city in Douglasville. Oh, and also, the, I saw in the, um, in the, um, um, Sentinel? No, not in the Sentinel, in the Chapel Hill News and Views. Views. Yes, sir. The work that you all are doing, preparing to do uh, for downtown, I think that's a wonderful idea. But I do hope that, and I also saw that you did include some on the north side, but I'm hoping that, I didn't see any specific development plans for that, but we'd like to be informed when that next meeting is because it's a wonderful opportunity to, to take the north side right on the other side of the tracks and really add something to um, the city of Douglasville. And specifically, I was thinking about if you had something like townhouse and this type of thing, but a, a, a bridge that you could walk and bridge, you know, they're not over expensive where people could literally live there and walk to the downtown areas. And I think that would add to it as well. Yes, sir. And Mr. Dan, we do have, there's a group um, from New Horizons on the north side that has galvanized themselves and we have in all of our plans, like our downtown master plan, our parks plan, there is a plan for uh, the north side as well. So we, we're definitely looking at that area. And once the, the uh, Jesse Davis Park is completed, then we'll, of course, after the realignment for the highway, we'll have plans for that park as well. And there's a groundbreaking on uh, January 24th with Paulding County at the Food Depot. Uh, GDOT starting their portion for Paulding is going to continue to move down through 92. So, Okay. Thank you very much. We're moving. Madam Mayor, can I? Yes, sir. An issue. I just want to be clear, and I, I think I've talked to Marsh about it because I, I was a little uh, unclear on it, but n the New Horizons is <laughs> not the city. That's a community plan. That's a com community organization. That is not the city organization. Is that correct? We're partner. It's part of the development. Of, we'll have the city manager clarify. You have not identified. You the plan is named New Horizon, but as far as a sanctioned group, the city of Douglasville does not have a sanctioned group called New Horizon. The development area on the north side, as Councilman Miller um, indicated, is you can refer to it as your urban redevelopment area. It mir it mirrors that exact same area, um, but I think the name came from the group of citizens who identified themselves as, as New Horizons. But yeah, so that's just, part of the Community and Economic Development Committee. Just my, my, con my concern with that is just that the citizens of, involved with New Horizons may have a different posi position or a different message than the actual city message that may come out. And so I just wanted to be clear that the city ought to be, the city and the community group ought to be designated separately and not confused for publicity purposes. I think at, we, de we have representation at those meetings. I've been at several of the meetings and the council members who represent yeah. Ward 3, so I haven't heard anything that's been uh, contradictory to the city yeah. unless I think, you have a comment. Tell me if I'm on the right um, path, Councilman Miller. I think if your comment is the new development, uh, the 250 acres that is um, being developed on the north side of um, Douglasville is developed under the urban development um, division of the city of Douglasville. And so the mayor and council, we did a resolution. So that 250 acres, the name um, that the citizens in that area came up with is they want that name to be called New Horizons. Is that, is that what you're hearing? I just have a concern because I'm, I'm, we're, I'm starting to see um, political positions come from the group, the group New Horizons, um, and articulated from New Horizons, and New Horizons is not a function 
of the city. The city may have representatives being involved with that. I just want to make sure that when issues are communicated by that organization, they are not interpreted by other folks as being from the city's position. Right. And so the naming is getting confused confusion i'm getting some phone calls on what's the city's position because a lot of people are assuming the city because we've used the term that we the city have used the terminology new horizons and now there's messages being developed by the community organization new horizons there's some confusion and i think that could be a a, a dangerous situation yeah that's probably something we need to probably talk about I was just going to mention there is a committee that is a planning committee, uh, very similar to what we did with the master plan committee, right. um, and we did solicit from um, the community uh, community and economic development committee chair to ward representatives um, some names. That meeting is the 30th. I'll send that information out tomorrow. Now the official naming of the group um, that's completely at you all's discretion if you want to come up with something different. Um, you, I mean, you hear, I mean, sometimes I refer to say north side planning study because it's inclusive of a, a large area which is on the north side. Um, but we will have a steering committee, and as far as I know, Councilman Miller, we will, will not be calling them by any, um, any name other than, you know, they're the planning committee. It's not that I don't have right. an issue with being involved. I, I mean, we, I support the north side and the redevelopment. I just don't want communications coming out, and I think we just need to be clear on which what. Right, and I, it's like we would say the south side, and there is a Chapel Hill subdivision because that's a big development. So Correct. I understand what you're saying. Right. And we, we're trying to respect if people self-identify and what they want to be identified as, but we understand that it's the urban redevelopment on the north side. Right, but, but let me just say this, that um, the New Horizons um, community group, when they met initially, they met with no elected officials in that meeting. That was that was the residents meeting and I chose personally not to meet because I didn't want to influence um, their decisions. Of course I, I do attend their meetings when um, because it is in my ward um, and then it's open to you know the mayor and council to attend as well. However I do want to say that um, the New Horizons group with the development um, of this 250 acres, they are very involved. They are are very passionate in regards to how it's developed, um, what is going to be there. And then I think it has just spurred a, a new level of passion just for other um, residents, business owners, citizens that live, you know, in the surrounding area to just get involved. So... You know, I, I I would ask if if you know if you're getting phone calls and getting mi mixed messages, I would I would um, encourage you to meet with the chairperson of New Horizons just so you can just so you can hear and even find out when the next meeting is so that there is no cloud of confusion. Well, and and that's what and yeah. and I understand the difference. I just I know that and when I first spoke with Miss Hampton, mm -hmm. heck, I thought our initiative. Was, was called New Horizons. Horizons. I, was, I was confused. So, and I really su uh, appreciate the community getting involved and mm -hmm. doing that. Just if a, I think I've seen some, some, some statements from New Horizons, mm -hmm. and when I saw that, and when some other folks saw those positions from New Horizons, uh, I believed, and some other folks believed that, or were concerned that that was from the city, mm -hmm. and. We hadn't even put the city plan in action yet. So I just thought at that point, we may want to be cognizant of a situation, but I'm not criticizing the folks no, I don't take it as criticism. at all. I appreciate, yeah. mm -hmm. and I think it's detrimental for the city for those folks to be involved. I just think when statements are being made, there needs to be, uh, I think the city ought to call it something, you know, something different. Yeah, and I appreciate your comments too, and I don't take it personal, I just, um I'm just glad to see that residents are active, involved, just as you are. Um, and and I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that during any meeting with New Horizons um, that is not here in the in um, in the presence of our mayor and council that other topics are not going to come up well, because sure. it's going to come up. I mean, it is what it is. But at any time, you know, just 
let me know. You know, keep me posted too, so that you know we're not getting front end with anything. But I'm not, you know, as elected officials, we're not a part of the committee or their voting or anything. But but thank you for the comments because I didn't know that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments from citizens and delegates? Not seeing any other um, persons come forward. Staff reports. We have any staff reports? Is there any other business to come before Mayor and Council tonight? Thank you not seeing any, then this meeting stands adjourned. Thank you.